First question is from Donaldson Spencer. What are your thoughts on Mark Ripito and the starting strength method? Oh, love it. Let's let's talk first about starting strength. Yeah, starting program. strength's great. It's one of the, I'd say one of the only, one of the few programs that will produce gains in a lot of people and strength and muscle size. It's a they focus it's almost entirely focused on compound mm -hmm. effective lifts. It's a lower volume somewhat program you're training the body a few days a week you're focusing on squats and deadlifts and bench presses i mean it's, it's not, super simplistic it's not that much different than anabolic i mean it is but the anabolic includes more accessory work yeah we phase the reps yeah there's it's it's even more simple than anabolic but very the, the okay the, the you thing, can see that the things in anabolic that give you the greatest bag for your buck are in Ripto yeah. starting strength. Yes. In fact, when I wrote Anabolic, um, starting strength was definitely one of the influences. It was one of the programs that actually works. Sure. It actually does work. You know, you have like five by five and starting strength, and then there's principles in bodybuilding that tend to work, and, you know, all that kind of was compiled to make MAPS Anabolic. But, you know, starting strength, especially if you're getting into resistance training, now you're not a complete <laughs> beginner, but you're kind of getting into it, or you want to do something that really just focuses on building strength and muscle. Um, in a consistent, you know, fashion, it's a great program. It's free. You go online, you can get it. Now, the I guess there's some downsides, right? The downsides are that it's it's a bit one dimensional. Yeah. Um, so you can develop some imbalances. There's no rotation typically involved. It's pretty much in the sagittal plane. Is that right? all there is to like? So I I know that much about starting strength to know that it, it's similar to anabolic. I've seen kind of the phasing yeah. and the exercises. Does he not have progressions and what he recommends is programs to follow up? Or is it like, this is the program? They do, but it's really, I mean, Similar. He, he really hammers like squat, deadlift, press, row. And I understand why, right? For most mm. people, that's excellent advice. Well, it's also why almost every one of our programs has those components. Yes. <laughs> but that's why it's called starting strength. I mean, it's the foundational yeah. like meat and potatoes that you need to focus on. And I think that's why, you know, I think it's super effective. Yeah. Now he can be himself, he can be a little abrasive because he's real hardcore about I it. I like him. Yeah. 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 He's, 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 he's an old like, dog, dude. I do. I like people. Those like I tell you what, those old strength coaches are great. They All are. of them. Yeah. Like you get someone who's been training people for strength for you no know, thirty years. Type of guy. You're gonna you're gonna hear like who's the why guy? Why haven't that? we hooked up with Ripto? Did did our buddy I Mike Mike do, Matthews? Did Mike yeah, do Ripto? He him. did. And why he, haven't we linked with him? Have we not reached out? I, we I haven't reached out personally. Yeah, we, should. we should. He's pretty controversial all the way across. the That's board. why he'd be fun to talk to. You sure. know what? I love to talk to him about because I know he he shits all over the trap bar. Mm -hmm. Yes. So he would be a fun person to kind of have. But he's that. controversial about everything. I know. He like is. you talked to him about anything. Yeah. And he's like, he's very opinionated. Well, I, so. It's a good time. I yeah. So what made me really go down the rabbit hole and stuff. So I kind of knew his stuff before. But when we had Jordan Shallow on the uh, YouTube channel, Shallow threw a shot across the bow at his uh, squat cues. Oh, mm. right. And, and he's got a very uh, strong following uh, and loyal following of people. And like, we got a bunch of hate. Uh, from that, I'm you know like, why he's got such a strong all? following? Because a lot of kids, shit works. A lot of kids yeah. went and found starting strength. It became really popular early 2000s when you know you know people were finding it on the internet. And um, up until that point, you had all these kids doing body part splits and these crazy routines. And then they're like, "Oh, I'm doing three exercises today. This is going to be crazy. I don't know if this is going to work." And then you got all these reports and like, "Oh my god, I've never been so strong. I'm building all this muscle and." So they've got hardcore followers because that's a good point because the '90s really was the birth of the bodybuilder split kind of or like the really the explosion of that. Would yeah. you say that the '90s was was what got everybody doing these body part splits and intensity training and all this accessory work? Yeah. yeah. And so what a brilliant thing! Starting strength comes out with something that's totally counterintuitive to what was popular at that time. It's probably what made it blow up. Yeah, and and, and people again were were just so excited about this actually works and it's so simple and I can't believe it and. But again, I'd say that the the weaknesses lie in the fact that you can develop some imbalances. You're not working in a lot of different planes. Um, it doesn't have. It, 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 there's you know one principle in, in starting strength is definitely a true one, which is there are certain lifts you should practice often, get good at them, and they should always pretty much be in your routine. But that doesn't mean there isn't any value to lots of other movements to train the body in different ways to avoid injury to develop and to, to develop balance 
and you need to do that kind of stuff. Well, as this well. is why Maps Performance follows exactly this. I mean, that was the thought process when we wrote performance and when we wrote our programs. Right? It wasn't like, oh, what's going to sell the most. It was no. like, okay, how we are we going to train someone? Yeah, we were training somebody. We just took them through Maps Anabolic. What are they lacking? Mm -hmm. So even though we believe that that's one of the best programs, it is our most sold program and probably the most valuable for the average person to start there. We know that once they're there and they've been following that, we wouldn't want them to stay there forever. Mm -hmm. We'd have to move them into something else. What would that look like? It would look like Matt's performance. Yeah. Yeah, and one thing, the, the main things that people will say about starting strength is that especially their squat will go through the roof. So there's a lot of jokes about starting strength people that they got like big butts and quads and everything else, mm -hmm. which is pretty cool. But it's, uh, again, it's a, it's a solid routine. I mean, I'll call it out if, if I need to, and I'll be honest and say something's great if it is. Mm -hmm. We have no affiliation. We don't make any money off the program, anything like that. It's a solid routine. It's based in solid principles. And for a lot of people, um, it definitely will work and make you stronger. It is not the be-all, end-all, unfortunately, especially if you have a long-term approach to your mm -hmm. fitness. Nor is any one of our programs. Correct. I, I, we stand by that, too. I would never tell anybody that, oh, MAPS Anabolic is the end-all, be-all program. Stick no. with it forever. So. No, no. You need to do different things to really maintain your body and to make sure you're not um, you know, developing particular imbalances or, or you know, aches and pains and injuries and just develop a kind of a whole – you know, uh, balanced physique type of deal. Well, yeah, your body... Uh, yeah, you're, you're strong in multiple directions. Yeah, your daily movements, you don't always move in the sagittal plane. Mm -hmm. So your your workout should mimic what real life should kind of look like. And yeah. that's where some of those programs yeah. lack. But the cool thing about Ripto is he says stuff like strength is the foundational yeah. physical pursuit. Very true. Yep. Yeah. How strength is so important for pretty much any physical pursuit. Very true. Yep. You're weak... Your stamina means nothing. If you're weak, your flexibility means nothing. In fact, yeah. it becomes a, a liability. So he he hits and and he's got a, he has had a tremendous impact in the world of resistance training. And I would put him up there, not as the guy that knows everything. I don't think anybody knows everything. But I would put him up there as one of the you know the godfathers of, of resistance yeah, training. Might, he, and strength I training. mean, if we were building, that's a, we should do that sometime. Like the the Rushmore of fitness. Yeah, that'd be kind of a cool episode to talk yeah. about. Who who's, we the think founder, of, who's the founder? Who is the founder? What was what's that powerlifting club that was breaking record? I can't believe it. I forgot. Uh, West Side Barbell. Yeah. West who's Side. the founder of that? Uh, I can't think of his name right Doug, now. Maybe I can picture look, him. You know, I can picture yeah. him with his shirt off and his tattoos. He's and, another old dog that's yeah, just yeah, yeah. freaking great, right? Yeah, yeah. Why can't they, I can't think of his name. They had contributed. Uh, he's contributed so much to strength. strength How are strength. all three of us drawing a blank on this? <laughs> Louis Simmons. Thank Simmons. you. Thank you. Jeez. My Jeez. So embarrassing. Yeah. It's, like, <laughs> it's like not remembering Arnold's name. You know? Yeah. Like yeah. Charles Louis Paul Quinn was the yeah, so, character. Yeah. These are all all people that had tremendous influence. Write that down. Let's do an episode on that. Let's build. Let's build who we think are like like the Mount Rushmore of strength. Yeah. Yeah. Or yeah. just fitness in general, and we could who I think are some of the the pioneers in our space, uh, like have really laid the foundation. Dr. Ed Thomas, I'll I mean, I would even that. argue Paul Check goes in there, dude. I, think, I would, yeah, I, would too. I, I think do. some because especially if when you talk about unconventional type stuff, yeah. like I definitely think that he belongs up there. Hey, if you enjoyed that clip, you can find the full episode here, or you can find other clips over here, and be sure to subscribe.